control. Um, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us this morning on virtual community. Um, if you have cameras, if you could turn them on so we could see your smiling faces, we would love to see your faces this morning. Nobody else. I wondered if faces would just pop up when I said that, but no, not really. Um, I wanted to present to you, hi, Andrea. See, smiling faces. Um, I wanna to present to you this morning, Anna Tobin from Meals on Wheels. I'm just gonna have her say a quick hello, and then I'm gonna share a video um, that she sent to me earlier all about Meals on Wheels. Well, hey, good morning, everyone. It's Anna. It's nice to see so many people via Zoom. It's like that is our typical way of meeting everyone. And I Wally and Kristen, I see Stephanie and Diane maybe. I, I can't see everybody on, but hello to everyone. We did create a video for you at Meals on Wheels. And please, this is not professional in the least. Mm -hmm. However, I did not want to sit here and just read you the list of things that we do at Meals on Wheels. We wanted you to see what we do at Meals on Wheels and meet some of the great people who have been all hands on deck ever since the beginning. Well, always, but especially during the COVID crisis, they've really gone above and beyond to make sure our seniors are fed. So with that, um, I was hoping that we could do a little question and answers at the end of the session. And I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some of the specific programs that we have available for your clients, 60 and older here in Tier Town. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my video. Can you guys still see me or can you see that video? We can see it. We can okay, see good. It. All right, here we go. Well, here it is, how I arrived good. at work each day. Sound is good. Mine's good. It's just a great looking facility. Um, We've been in the, the place about a year. Um, moved in last March. I guess it's almost a year and a half now. But as you enter into our parking lot, our seniors have a great uh, access to the facility here. And this is our entryway. And as we begin the day, um, we will take a tour and hopefully talk with some of our staff members. And I'm excited to show you the place. Okay, so as we start to go into the facility, this is our main entrance. Uh, when we are open, our seniors come in this door and uh, the first person they meet when they come into our waiting area is Julie Kincaid. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Hi, Julie is our administrative assistant and I'm gonna give you a quick look at our waiting area. So sometimes our seniors come in and um, they have a seat. Sometimes they sit here while they're waiting for transportation. But Julie is the first stop as people come into the facility. So Julie, tell us a little bit about what it is you do. Well, I answer the phones and I greet people that come in through the door. And the first thing that they do when they come in is they'll come over here to the computer. Okay, let's see this, okay. Oh, nice. Yeah, so they scan their card and sign in for their lunch and their activity. And then they come back and they go back to the uh, dining area. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for all you do. You wear many hats here. Yes. I know you put together our agency newsletter. Mm -hmm. uh, you do a lot of administrative duties and that type of thing and answering that phone. Yes. Yeah, and a lot of calls. Yeah, so I'm going to get out of here so you can get back to work. And I'm sure as soon as I step away, there'll be a phone call coming in. Okay, <laughs> right there, call. Me too. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you. So after our seniors stop and see Julie, they come on into the facility. We have a confidential meeting room if we need to have a meeting with people. But as you come on in, hi Diana, this is Diana. She takes care of our janitorial work. And we have a, a, a corridor where the seniors can hang out. Piano was donated to us, so oftentimes we have music playing in the hallway. It's kind of quiet now. We're still closed to the general public. But this is our dining room, it seats around 70 people. And as our seniors come in, um, it's a uh, free flow dining. They can come in between the hours of 10 and 1 each weekday, Monday through Friday. We do have our television um, that we that we have on during the day. When we're up and running, uh, this is the this is the small kitchen. It's called our service kitchen. So our seniors generally, come through the line if they're able, they pick up their food, 
and they come on through and then are able to come on out into the dining room to have their lunch. If a senior is unable to go get their own food, then they uh, are served by our wait staff. We do have a coffee station here. This is where the seniors can get their coffee and their drinks. So as much independence as we can supply to the seniors when they come in for lunch, it's great. Um, but obviously we are able to serve those seniors who need served. And this dining hall really is a great place for the socialization, to have lunch with each other, and to spend time with friends, all part of what Meals on Wheels is focused on. So we'll go on down and we'll see where uh, the next stop is on our tour. So the agency is split into a nutrition division and the aging services division. And this section of the facility is where we're going to uh, visit the warehouse, we're going to see some of the drivers, we'll see the kitchen and our route support staff. So we'll begin here with the warehouse. So this is our food warehouse. We do a lot of packing of meals our coolers and freezers. Uh, we brought most of these over from our old location, had to purchase a couple of additional uh, coolers and freezers to make sure we had enough room for all our food. We get a couple of deliveries each week. We work one on Tuesdays from U.S. Foods. Um, we also have plenty of storage for our dry goods, our trays, and that kind of thing. So. These were all classrooms that we converted into the food warehouse. So we're just so appreciative of our new space. If you've ever volunteered to pack meals with Meals on Wheels, this is the location where people come in and pack sacks. We had a couple of volunteers earlier today who helped us out. And we always appreciate that. So again, our food storage warehouse, delivery dock, and then we go right back out to our packing room where our volunteers and drivers all set up for the day. All right, so we'll head on over to the kitchen where we'll meet Amber Goins, who is our nutrition manager. Hi, Amber. Hi, Anna. What are you guys having today? We are having macaroni cheese, stewed tomatoes, and green butter peas. And it's definitely a staff for a client favorite. Oh, I know it's my favorite, too. I love that. Okay, so how many meals will you be putting out today? We will be doing about a thousand meals today, uh, 800 hot, 200 frozen. Uh, wow, that's a really, busy Friday. That's really something. Well, thank you for all you do. Your staff does great work and puts out some really good meals. Thank you. All right, thanks. I'm going to take a quick picture so everybody can see how big the commercial kitchen is. And you guys begin operating what time every morning? Uh, we start cooking about 6 a.m. every day and by 9 a.m. We are starting to send out meals. Uh, so you can see it takes multiple people. Each person has a designated task. And once they get to the seal point, we, we card them up for how many each route needs. And then the drivers take them to their hot shops and, and keep them warm and, and run their routes. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Amber. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye, buddy. So we're getting ready to deliver out into the city. Hi, Brenda. Just taking a quick picture of everybody. Okay, well, there's Tanyao. She's heading out. See you later, Tanyao. And we're making our way over to see Rebecca. She is in the, um, she's the route manager for Meals on Wheels, and she coordinates the volunteers and all the drivers and makes sure the right meals are out to the right people. So, hi, Rebecca. Hi, Anna. Yeah, tell us a little bit about your office back here and what you all do. Well, normally I have some helpers here. They're all out. Teresa sits here. She does uh, our trays. She puts labels on. Um, does the special meal labels for our special clients. Um, mm -hmm. She is out delivering around. And Mary is out at the moment. And she helps with phone calls, contacts, um, emergency response contacts for emergency contacts for our clients that uh, aren't answering their doors for their meals. Mm -hmm. Um, That's that whole meal and so much more, isn't it? Because you're the extra eyes and ears for many of our seniors. We like to make sure they're safe. That's for sure. Um, 
got all the drivers out this morning, so they are all out. It's quiet time, so now we're going to do our um, emergency meals for uh, for 14 meals for clients that are needing those for the COVID-19. Oh, great! Um, so we're going to get Leonard out of here and clean up a bunch of those. Okay. All right. Well, how many meal routes are delivered in the city of Lancaster? We have city routes. We have twelve, seven okay. county routes. Wow. So, oh, how many meals are you throwing out there every day? Almost seven hundred. Wow, that's seven hundred and seventy. And that's the hot delivered, right? Correct. That's awesome. Hot. Plus, we have an, an additional one hundred fifty to two hundred, or even more, of frozen. Yep, and congregates. Yeah. So total, what are you thinking? Maybe around a thousand. Right That's amazing. Well, thank you for all you do, and thanks for letting me pop in today. All right, thank you, Anne. Okay, bye. Okay, so as we leave Rebecca's office, I wanted to show you our volunteer entrance and just um, kind of let you see our fleet. Um, we do have a fleet of 26 vehicles that we utilize in helping to get those meals out to our seniors. Our volunteers and our paid staff use this entrance to load up the vehicles, to bring the meals in and out. And I'm kind of showing you the back part of our property. And so um, we do have about three acres here. This is our fleet. We do have a uh, several hot shop trucks. I think we're up to about eight or nine of those. We have individual vehicles that our staff drive to go out and deliver those meals. This is the bus we use for our medical transportation and our nutrition transportation. So there's that. We maintain the playground to the back of the facility um, for use with the community. So it's very nice. Children come up and play from time to time. There is a walking track. Our staff and some of our seniors utilize the walking track as part of outdoor activity. So all good. As you can see, um, we have a lot of property to take care of. So we're always looking for volunteers too to help us out in that regard. So you have a chance to see our vehicles and um, kind of the outside of the facility and how that all works. So we'll head back in and we'll head back over to the other side of the, the organization. So as we leave the nutrition wing, we head on back over to the aging services area. That's where our activities take place, the assessments, the education, and all the fun stuff happens over here. Our administrative services are also located on this side of the building. And we'll take a look at what's going on today, even though we are closed to the general public. So here we are coming into one of our activity rooms. And hi, Gina. Hi. Gina's our activity coordinator, and she's working on a very special project to keep everybody connected. Bring Sam home quilt squares for everybody. They're going to be some construction paper, pieces of paper, have them decorate, and the individuals decorate. They send it back in, and I'm assembling. We are in this together. I love that. We are in this together. We all have, they all did their own artwork and then I just put it together. I did the heart. So they know that we love them and we're thinking of them. Oh, I love that. So what other ways are you keeping your seniors connected during this COVID crisis? Um, right here, I'm getting some crafts ready to send. I'm going to send all the, everything they need to make their crafts. The glue, the paint, the paintbrush, everything that they need. Um, we also play bingo today via telephone conference. So that is always a big hit because the seniors love bingo. <laughs> well, Gina, Gina Holbrook, our activity coordinator here at Meals on Wheels, thank you so very much for all you're doing to keep our seniors connected. You are quite welcome. Okay, so as we continue our tour of the facility, as you can see, the hallways are a bit quiet. This is our board meeting room. And as we go on down the hallway, 
we do have a library that we have available with books and reading areas. So our seniors can come on in and enjoy themselves while they're here. One of the other rooms that we have available for our seniors is our chair volleyball room. And as you can see, it's set up for chair volleyball. And uh, we do run a league where we have 13 teams that practice and they play uh, games throughout the club. And um, also this is our horse races. And so Gene always has great activities for our seniors. They do fly swatter badminton in here as well. But just a great, great facility here for our seniors in Fairfield County. And then as we work our way through this hallway, this is still under construction, but it will be our computer lab. Right now we're using it to package emergency emergency packs for our seniors as we work through the COVID crisis. And then we do also have an adaptive equipment room. We loan out wheelchairs, transfer benches, all kinds of equipment to seniors. Maybe they're coming out of the hospital and need some, some help ambulating around the home and may need a piece of equipment. We also have the pens and other pieces of adaptive medical equipment to help our seniors out. And so this is the activity side of Meals on Wheels. Okay, so next we come to our Aging Services Department and we meet Amber Throckmorton. Hi, Amber. Hi, and how are you today? Great, so can you tell the viewers what you do here? Yes, I am the Aging Office Manager here at Meals on Wheels, trying to do anything, which means I've helped the clients about potential services, or changing services, adding services. Wonderful, well, I know you take a lot of phone calls because yes. we bring a lot of seniors in each year. Yes. So thanks, so we'll go on ahead and go through the rest of the Aging Services Department. There's Chris, and we'll stop in and say hello to Linda. She's the Director of Aging Services. Hi, Linda. Hi. So what does your, you and your team do here? Uh, we have big seniors. We have over 20 different supportive services that we, that we, we can um, provide for seniors. Just seniors that are aging or just aging. Wonderful. Well, I'm going to take a quick run through your department and show everybody uh, all the different people who work here and just have a little chat with them. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. All right, so we do have uh, several care coordinators on staff. This is Chris Silvick. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. And you take care of our pet program as well, don't you? I do take care of our pet program, based on grants and donations. So if anybody out there wants to make donations, so we can provide some pet food to our seniors, we're welcome to have those donations. All right, I have to say how neat and tidy your desk area is. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go down, take a look, and say hello to Joe. Joe Rock. Oops, got him off the phone. Yeah, just get a message. Oh, Joe's a care coordinator with us as well. And um, you help with other programs? Uh, yeah, I assist sometimes with adaptive equipment, things that people may need to help them, uh, mobility around the home, walkers, uh, rollators, wheelchairs, transport chairs, things like that. Wonderful. Well, thanks for all you do. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go on over to see Brian Roby, who is uh, another one of our aging associates and Brian you do a variety of different things with the agency. Can you I tell do. us about some of your programs? I, yes, I'm the uh, life flight coordinator here which is an emergency response system. Um, I also help Joe with the adaptive equipment and uh, we also have a uh, commodities program here with food supplemental boxes. Okay. So I'm a coordinator for that. So you've got a lot on your plate. Yep, thanks for all you do and we'll go on over and we'll see who else is here. Thanks, Brian. Thank well, Kathy um, Robbins is another one of our care coordinators. She's out today, but we do have Joyce McGinnis, who is also a care coordinator. Hi, Joyce. Good morning. How long have you been with the agency? Since February. I'm the new kid. You're the new kid, and you came in right amidst <laughs> COVID, didn't you? Yes. Yep. Thanks for all you do, and um, I'm going to move on to the next uh, par portion of the agency so our viewers can see the administrative services. See you later. So here we go over to the administrative services. Okay, so as we get into our 
age administrative services. I'm going to start back here with the head honcho. We have Sarah Arledge, who is the director of our administrative services. So, hi, Sarah. Hi. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do here? Sure. Um, so, my main responsibility with the agency is to take care of our finances. So, I take care of like the accounts payable, accounts receivable. I oversee our representative pay program, all of our contract services, compliance, those types of things. Great. Well, thank you for all you do. And I'm going to go on and say hello to BJ. BJ Barnhart. Hi, Brian. Uh, um, tell us a little bit about what you do for the agency. Uh, data entry. Lots of data entry, yes. right? We, we move a lot of information all the time. Well, hello, and thank you for being on the video with us this morning. And then we come to Amber Locke. Hi, Amber. Can you tell us what you do with the agency? Uh, yes. I'm the main person for the PE program, and I take care of the South Park program. Wonderful. Thanks to you, too, for all you do. And then we come to Gina. Hi, Hi. Gina. Gina Holbrook. Hi. Hi, Gina. Can you tell everybody what you do? I'm the activity coordinator, and I come up with fun things for the clients to do. Get ready to here oh yeah, we met you on another segment, didn't we? You were yes. making a community <laughs> quilt the last time yeah. we talked to you. Yeah. So I'm just going to do a quick overview. Thank you for all you do, uh, Gina. But this is a quick overview here. Of the okay, and next we're going to visit with Kayla Hazlett, who is our in-home services manager. Good morning. Good morning. And can you tell our viewers a little about what you do here at Meals on Wheels? So I help coordinate and help out with the in-home services. We offer home cooking and we offer personal care. And now we offer respite for our caregiver support program. Oh, and the caregiver support program is a great program for those unpaid caregivers yeah. who may be struggling to care for their loved yeah. ones. We understand their kids are needs change by a daily basis, sometimes weekly. So there's a lot more flexibility between you know help with home cooking and respite care for them. Awesome. And then currently uh, with our CARES Act funding uh, that we were awarded, you're coordinating a very interesting program. Yes. So we ended up with a grant. We get to help um, any senior in Fairfield County who's struggling to pay rent or utilities. And we are able to help them out and pay for those. So we're really excited about that program. That's awesome. So emergency uh, funding available for, um, I guess, helping people not be evicted during this time, yeah. right? And making sure that yeah, they have. Anyone who's really on the hard to do. COVID-19 and all the struggles that we've been having lately and life's kind of not been normal since that happened <laughs> so we're just trying to help out all the seniors. Wonderful so if you're struggling with mortgage or rent um, assistance or you need utility assistance if you're working with clients uh, who have their struggles give Kayla a call. Yeah, of course. So well, what's, yeah. our, what's our phone number? 740 <laughs> 681 That's awesome thanks Kayla. Okay. Well, that brings us to the end of our tour with Meals on Wheels. We hope you enjoyed um, seeing the different aspects of our agency and learning a little bit more about what we do here at Meals on Wheels to help take care of the seniors of Fairfield County. Thank you so much and God bless you all for all you are doing for your clients and for our community and in taking care of each other because as you know, we're all in this together. Anna, everyone looked like they were so excited for you to come around the corner to talk to them. <laughs> Some people were running the other direction. I know. Wasn't that so funny? You know, it's kind of like a home video, like a family video. So I hope you learned a little bit about Meals on Wheels and what we're doing here uh, to care for the seniors of Fairfield County on a daily basis, but especially through the COVID crisis. So. Um, before we get into question and answers, I just wanted to remind everyone that we do have that um, housing stability grant that does pay for um, emergency utility assist if there's danger of uh, shutoff or if there's uh, eviction notice coming or foreclosure. We can help turn around a, a payment to those vendors fairly quickly. So for 60 and older living in Fairfield County, we would love to receive referrals. We're about halfway through the funding at this point. And it is a one-time deal. So when that funding's gone, it's gone. And as well, we do have some emergency um, programs for food. And one of those programs, uh, it's not necessarily that they would have to qualify as being homebound to receive 
a pack of 14 frozen meals, which we can deliver every two weeks, just to ensure our seniors have a nutritious meal in front of them. Uh, some of our seniors are still fearful to get out to the grocery store. And in that same vein, we do have emergency grocery delivery that we're able to provide for the seniors as well. So all those services start with a referral or a call to the agency. Uh, we can get them connected fairly quickly, usually within the 24 to 48 hours. And then let's see, the other thing is just, again, those virtual activities have been really great for many of our seniors who, who do still feel strong effects of isolation during this time. We are not reopening as the senior centers have been uh, granted permission to reopen as of September 21st, I believe. Uh, but we made the decision as an essential service versus a senior center uh, to remain closed to the general public, but still offering all those essential services that we have for our seniors. So I'm available to answer any questions you might have or something sparked your interest. I know it was difficult to hear some of the um, staff members speak with those masks on. So if, if something kind of halfway went in your ear and you need clarification, I'm happy to answer any questions. I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So because we live in a, uh, a virtual world essentially now, are you guys offering any kind of education or classes for seniors on how they can connect um, through that? more now than ever before so with um with uh, our activity coordinator she is reaching out to our seniors and seeing who is who is interested in doing zoom or who is interested in the, we're doing a lot of teleconferencing because that seems to be the comfort level we do a big conference call and they participate and that's all uh, been pretty much the uh, opinion for our healthy you as a, as a um, chronic illness management class people are preferring to communicate through their through telephone conferencing. As far as going, you know, we're not going into the homes currently for in-home assessments, for uh, providing education or anything like that within the home until the state of emergency is lifted or our funders, which is Central Ohio Area Office on Aging, gives us permission to go back into the home. Um, but it, it is a good question because it, it's like a double-edged sword. The seniors who need us most have the most difficulty with technology. And so um, as we move forward into the pandemic, I am sure that we'll continue to try to encourage our seniors to use that Zoom and to use other um, technology-based um, media so that they can stay connected. So right now it's a lot of telephone calling. We have a telesupport program that um, we make phone calls to the seniors, kind of as a wellness check and just a time for them to chat with somebody, you know, during the week. And I know you talked, um, and I can't remember the person's name at the end, about different services that you guys provide as far as um, help with um, rent and things like that. But when I first learned about all the, the extra things that Meals on Wheels does, I was surprised because most people think, you know, it's just a meal delivery to seniors. But Kristen also said in the, in the chat, she was surprised all the other services. Can you give us like an outline of what those services look like? And I also wanted to ask about your pet program because that was another thing that I, I, um, I heard about when we were working with you through the chamber and I thought that was a good thing for people to know about. Yeah, so that is a great question and that is a question we get all the time. We have kind of an identity crisis because when people think of Meals on Wheels, they think of meals, which is perfectly normal because that's our name. But uh, Meals on Wheels of Fairfield County is actually the Office on Aging for Fairfield County. And what that means is we receive the federal funding, we receive, um, have the programs in place to support our seniors. So besides the nutrition program, we have roughly 20 additional programs that help su support seniors in helping them maintain their independence, connection to the community, and overall health and wellness. And so that can range everything from uh, in-home services such as personal care and homemaking, the caregiver support program, which provides uh, education and support, as well as respite services for caregivers. We do the emergency response buttons, which are, you know, the help me, I call them, I can't get up button. Um, we have adaptive equipment, we do minor home repairs, uh, utility assist, um, and then, you know, uh, pet support program that Rachel was referring to, 
is in place to help some of our low-income clients who are struggling to care for their pets, uh, help them with food, pet food, and minor veterinarian care. Because we know how important our senior pets are to them. It's their source of socialization for the day and their buddies. And so we want to keep them healthy and together as long as possible. But again, Meals on Wheels just has a variety of programs available for our seniors, 60 and older here in Fairfield County. Those programs also include education. We have two certified matter balance trainers on staff as well as two healthy you trainers on staff. We also offer OSHIP, which is Ohio Health Insur Insurance Information Program, and that helps with Medicare counseling around that Medicare Part D. So a lot of education going on. We have so many great plans for the future. We have a fabulous facility that we can grow into and continue to offer additional programs for our seniors. Um, I had a question in the chat about um, how much it costs to get the meals delivered. And I, you go ahead and answer that because I had an idea, but I thought maybe I was wrong. So you take it away because you're the expert. Okay. So Meals on Wheels is, is a funded program for, for our county. Every county is different. And so here in Fairfield County, we have the Older Americans Act funding, which helps support uh, the meal program, as well as the Meals on Wheels Senior Services Levy. So for our county, because we receive federal funding, we do have to ask seniors for a donation, but we never turn seniors away if they are unable or unwilling to make a donation to their meal program. Now, some of our other services, like the Lifeline Emergency Response systems or the home repairs, they have mandatory cost shares or cost shares. And those are based on the client's income. So that's where sometimes we get into a little um, discussion on does meals on wheels cost or not, because some of our programs do have those cost shares involved. I've got a question for you, Anna. I, since we work um, with employment for people with disabilities, I'm wondering, have you ever had any of our individuals come into your facility to, to help maybe package meals or anything like that? We have. We've had several groups come in and help pack our side sacks to the meals. And they'll schedule a time with our uh, nutrition manager, and they bring in a group of people, maybe three to five people, and they'll pack those sacks for a bit of time. And we welcome the volunteers. Right, thank you. You're welcome. Do you have any other areas that you can use volunteers for around the agency on a normal day-to-day -day basis? Absolutely, funny you should ask. We are in desperate need of volunteer delivery drivers. And that's because we have 12 routes in the city of Lancaster and those routes continue to grow. And uh, each one of those routes requires, you know, a, a volunteer, one day each week, so that's what 60 volunteers potentially to cover all those routes. When we don't have enough volunteers, we have to pull paid staff or hire staff to come in to make sure that those routes are delivered. And again, so the, the volunteer delivery driver, we often need help in the kitchen, um, on the line, carrying food, packaging the food. Uh, one of the, some of our other programs are a commodity program where from time to time we have meal boxes that need delivered. Rachel, I think you came in and helped us deliver some produce. This summer we had a, a program where we received fresh produce that needed to get out to roughly 200 seniors. And so we do need volunteers to help, especially on the special programs that come up. Okay, that's all the questions I have. I was making notes while you were talking. Does anybody else have any other questions? Um, hey, Anna, don't you have a cool fundraiser going on right now? Oh, well, Andrea, funny you should ask. Hello. Yes, we just completed our Brown Bag It for Hunger fundraiser. Uh, that was yesterday, but we also have a virtual raffle for hunger fundraiser going on. And that kind of stemmed out of the fact that we received oh, several, over 40 or 50, um, wonderful gift packages for our March for Meals event that was supposed to happen in March. So we ended up with all these items that we needed to um, promote back to the community. And so we decided to do a virtual raffle to help reduce and raise awareness for senior hunger. 
So that is going on right now through the end of the month. And you can uh, locate uh, information on that on our website at mirabonwheelsfairfieldcounty.org. And you'll see a whole list of all those prizes. Each raffle ticket is a dollar. And so if you choose to buy 20 different uh, raffle prizes, you can indicate where you want us to put your tickets and you send in your check. Or you can pay online at mealsonwheelsfairfieldcounty.org as well. And we'll do the drawing on October 6th. Thank you for reminding me, Andrea. No problem. My fingers are crossed. Yes. <laughs> okay. Does anyone, I don't have any more questions in the chat. Does anyone else have any questions for Anna? Nope. Okay. Well, Anna, thank you so much for being here today and thank you for the video. You covered everything. Um, so we really appreciate all of that information and we will, everybody I'm sure will want to sign up to help volunteer. So everybody that wants to do that, they can email me and I'll get with Anna because everybody's, I know going to be super excited about doing that, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> cool. All well, right. Thank you for the time today. I really appreciate being able to share all the wonderful, um, support that the Meals on Wheels can offer for our seniors. So thank you for that time today. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, guys. Oh, before we go, let me remind you also, Thursday um, coming up on a virtual community is, who is it? Compassion Furniture Bank. That'll be on Thursday um, at the same time, same place. So it'll have a new link. October link is out there. So sign up with on the October link to get on that Zoom that day.